Town of Cruise Ports, Alaska. Table of Contents, Alaska. Chapter 16 Education in Alaska. Alaska's Constitution provides for education for all children. Villages with even a handful of students are provided with public schools. Children who are unable to reach a village are given correspondence studies by mail. Every year more than 800 students are enrolled in the state-run centralized correspondence study program. The University of Alaska, a land-grant college, was opened in 1922 at College, near Fairbanks. In addition, there are senior campuses at Anchorage and Juneau. The university also maintains branch colleges at Saldot, Nakodiak, Palmer, Bethel, Kotzebue, Nome, Ketchikan, Valdez, and Sitka. Other institutions in the state are the Sheldon Jackson College at Sitka, Alaska Pacific University and Alaska Business College at Anchorage, and the Alaska Bible College at Glen Allen. Marshland covers the Delta region of the Yukon and Kuskokwim Rivers in Alaska. Chapter 17 Fishing Alaska leads all other states in both volume and value of fish production in 1989. The state produced about half of the total United States fish production. Salmon is one of the state's leading products. Through the introduction of conservation measures the harvests, which had been declining, have returned to the record levels of the 1930s and 1940s. Sockeye and pink salmon rank first in number. Bachum, coho, and chinook salmon are also taken. Most of the salmon catch is frozen, primarily for export to Japan and Europe. About one-third of the catch, mostly pink salmon, is canned. Other commercial catches are shellfish, crab shrimp, and clams, halibut herring, and sablefish. The circulation of water of the Alaska Gyre the Gulf of Alaska region produces an abundant supply of plankton, which serves as the basis of Alaska's rich marine life and fisheries. The upwelling and downwelling of water in this Gulf of Alaska region produces nutrient-rich water, with a plentiful supply of plankton, that serves as the basis of a rich food chain, with large numbers of fish seals whales birds, and other animals. This is a map of the phytoplankton distribution in all of the oceans. Note the high concentration in the Gulf of Alaska. The phytoplankton is the basis of the marine food chain. The Alaska willow ptarmigan is the state bird of Alaska. The lumber industry is important to Alaska's economy. Chapter 18 The Cities of Alaska About two-thirds of Alaskans live in towns and cities. Although the lower towns are as modern as those in the Afe states, they are widely separated and surrounded by sparsely populated areas. Some towns can be reached only by ship, riverboat, or airplane. Chapter 19 Ketchikan Ketchikan is near the southern end of the Alaskan Peninsula in the Inside Passage. Ketchikan is the first port of call in Alaska for northbound ships. Ketchikan is about 100 miles 160 kilometers north of Prince Rupert, British Columbia, and very close to Misty Fjords National Monument. Ketchikan is a port of entry in the Alexander Archipelago. Here is a view of the area around Ketchikan along the Inside Passage. Ketchikan is nestled on a narrow stretch of flatland at the base of the mountains. 
Ketchikan was originally a fishing settlement and a supply center for miners during the gold rush of the 1890s. Ketchikan's Tlingit Indian name, Kachkana, means spread wings of prostrate eagle. Served by a transport and by steamship lines along the Inside Passage, Alaska Marine Highway. Ketchikan has an economy based on fishing, canning, logging, pulp milling, and tourism. It has the state's largest pulp mill and has a Majo fishing fleet. Ketchikan has become a popular port for cruise ships. During the season several cruise ships are in the port every day. Ketchikan is centered on its waterfront, with many buildings constructed above the water on pilings. The Ketchikan campus of the University of Alaska Southeast was opened as a community college in 1954. Ketchikan is a busy fishing port. This is part of the Ketchikan fishing fleet. The Ketchikan downtown area has throngs of tourists during the busy summer season. One major reason why Ketchikan gets so much rain is that there are mountains right behind the city. The prevailing moisture-laden winds coming in from the Pacific Ocean are forced up by the mountains causing condensation and rainfall. Hey mister! How many inches a year does it rain in Ketchikan? Here in Ketchikan, we don't measure the rain in inches. We measure it in feet. Now, there's a lot of liquid sunshine in Ketchikan. In 2005, it was 192 inches. In one day, it rained 8.7 inches. That was October 11, 1977. The record for the number of consecutive days of rain was 101 days. Set in 1953. The average rainfall is 12.5 feet, or 150 inches, 381 cm, a year. Here is the average annual rainfall for towns along the Inside Passage region of Alaska from Ketchikan in the south to Skagway in the north. We see that as we go north up the Inside Passage the annual rainfall decreases rapidly, especially from Ketchikan to Wrangell. This is due mainly to the blocking effect of the islands of the Alexander Archipelago. Here, Sitka has been included. The rainfall is somewhat greater in Sitka because of its coastal location. Cities further north in Alaska are now included. We note that except for Valdez near the coast on Prince William Sound, the rainfall figures are relatively small. With Fairbanks receiving only 10.6 inches, 27 cm, and Barrow on the north slope a meager 4.5 inches, 11.4 cm. Valdez is along the coast, so as expected it has a much higher rainfall than Anchorage. Here again is the average monthly rainfall in Ketchikan. We again see that there is substantial rain all year long, with the rainfall increasing in the fall months, reaching a peak in October. This is a horse-drawn tour bus in Ketchikan. These are totem poles at the Saxman Totem Park near Ketchikan. The Saxman Village Totem Pole Park is just a few miles southeast of Ketchikan. The Saxman Village Totem Pole Park is home to a collection of 14 restored and reconstructed totem poles from the forests of southeast Alaska. This is the Saxman Village Totem Pole Park. Chapter 20
You know. The picturesque city of Juneau is the capital of Alaska. It is situated on the mainland of the Panhandle of southeastern Alaska. It is about a thousand miles, 1,600 kilometers, northwest of Seattle. Juneau is near the northern end of the Inside Passage, between Sitka and Skagway. Islands to the west shelter Juneau from the open Pacific Ocean, about 75 miles, 120 kilometers, distant. The climate is mild but very damp. Annual precipitation averages more than 90 inches, 230 cm. Juno's chief industries, apart from government, our tourism, mining, and fishing. Juno is the only United States capital that can be reached solely by air or water. Juno often reminds tourists of San Francisco because of the houses snuggled together along winding roads against the mountainsides. Juno has a beautiful setting on the fjord like Gastineau Channel. Juno's buildings climb the forested slopes of Mount Roberts and Mount Juno, which rise steeply from the water's edge to more than 3,500 feet, 1,060 meters, each. Behind Juneau are the coast mountains. A bridge across Gastineau Channel connects the main part of the city with Douglas Island, a residential area of Juneau. Chapter 21 The History of Juneau The settlement became the mining center of Alaska. Juneau was settled by gold miners in 1880. It was named for Joel Juno, who with Richard Harris discovered gold in the area in 1880. Douglas was the site of the treadmill gold mines. Juno was made the territorial capital of Alaska in 1900, but the government offices were not moved from Sitka until 1906. When Alaska was admitted to the Union in 1959, Juneau became the state capital. Chapter 22 Juneau Points of Interest After the gold rush, Juneau eventually regained its economic strength through tourism and various government industries. In an election held in 1982, Alaskans voted to retain Juneau as their capital. The population of Juneau is 33,000. This is a view of Juneau. Atram is 1,800 feet to the top of Mount Roberts. This is the Gastineau Channel near Juneau. Alaska's Gastineau Mine was once the largest gold mine in the world. This is Juneau and the surrounding mountains. Here are some points of interest in Juneau, all well within walking distance of the cruise ships. We have here the Alaska State Capitol Building, the Governor's Mansion, the Juneau Douglas City Museum, Alaska State Museum, and the Russian Orthodox Church. Juno's tallest government building is the Federal Building, followed by the State Office Building, the State Court Building, and the older brick and marble column State Capitol. The Alaska State Museum near the waterfront has excellent Indian, Eskimo, and Aleut cultural displays, wildlife and mining exhibits, and art and totem poles. The Alaska State Museum. This shows the location of the Alaska State Museum in Juneau. The Juneau Douglas City Museum displays artifacts and photographs from the city's pioneer and mining history and Tlingit culture. This shows the location of the Juneau Douglas City Museum.
In the Juno Douglas City Museum fail are gorgeous stained glass windows. A large topographical model of the Juno area. And a 600-year-old fish trap found in a local river. A 26-minute video on Juno's gold mining history shows each half hour. This is the governor's mansion. The Russian Orthodox Church of St. Nicholas was established 1894 by the native Tlingit people. This shows the location of the St. Nicholas Russian Orthodox Church. Chapter 23 The Mendenhall Glacier The Mendenhall Glacier is a short distance north of Juneau. This is the Mendenhall Glacier. The outskirts of Juneau are approaching close to the Mendenhall Glacier, which itself is retreating. Mendenhall Glacier is only a few miles north of Juneau. Here is Juneau, Mendenhall Glacier, and Mendenhall Lake. This is the Mendenhall Glacier. The Mendenhall Glacier is easily accessible by trail from the visitor center. The Juneau ice field that feeds Mendenhall Glacier is the size of the state of Rhode Island and extends into British Columbia. You can hike along the borders of the Mendenhall Glacier. This is 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 the Mendenhall Glacier. Juneau can be reached only by air or by water cruise ship stock right by the central area of the city. The Juneau Airport is 9 miles, 14 kilometers, away. The Alaska Marine Highway serves several major ports, including Juneau. Ferries connect the Panhandle with Seattle and Prince Rupert, British Columbia. The harbor is excellent and ice-free the year-round. Just north of the harbor begins the Lynn Canal, a channel that leads to Haines and Skagway. Chapter 24 Skagway Skagway is at the northern end of the Lynn Canal and at the northernmost point of the Inside Passage. Skagway was founded in the 1890s as the gateway to the Yukon and Klondike gold fields. Here is a satellite view of Skagway in the Lynn Canal. The Lynn Canal leading up to Skagway is not an actual canal in the sense of being an artificial waterway. Instead, it is a real fjord. Skagway is nestled in a narrow valley between high mountain ridges. The Klondike gold fields were north of Skagway in the Yukon Territory of Canada. Skagway was the starting point for the White Pass Trail that led to the Yukon River, and then down to the Klondike Gold Fields. The White Pass Trail started from Skagway, and the nearby Chilku Trail started from the neighboring town of Dai. Dai is now just a ghost town. The White Pass Trail went from Skagway to Bennett Lake and then down the Yukon River to the Klondike Gold Fields. A second trail was the Chilku Trail which went from nearby Dai to Bennett Lake. This was a more direct route, but with a more difficult climb. Chapter 25 The White Pass and Yukon Railway During the Gold Rush period in 1898, Construction began on a railroad close to the route of the White Pass Trail. 
The railroad was completed two years later in 1900. With 100 miles, 160 kilometers of narrow gauge track. Skagway later owed its importance to being the Pacific coastal terminus of the White Pass and Yukon Route WP and YH Railway from Whitehorse, head of navigation on the Yukon River in Canada. The railway suspended service in 1982. But a portion of the Lowy line was later reopened for tourist travel. This is a sign for the White Pass and Yukon Route Railway. Excursion trains run from Skagway on the narrow gauge White Pass and Yukon Railroad to the top of the pass in Canada and back. It is a three who round trip ride. Great vistas can be seen on this trip. This is the White Pass and Yukon Route Railway. Portions of the route are very close to the original trail taken by the Gold Seeker in 1898. The excursion goes across the U.S.-Canada border near the end of the trip before turning around. This is Skagway. Skagway has only 800 residents, but welcomes over 400,000 visitors each year. Lyersville is at mile 3 of the Klondike Highway, just north of Skagway. It recreates the fun and folly of the gold rush days. Cruise ships and ferries call it the Ice Freeport, and the Klondike Highway too links the town with the Alaska Highway. Skagway has only one main street filled with shops for tourists. It's just a short walk from the cruise ships to the center of town. Built in 1897, the Red Onion Saloon operated as one of the finest bordellos in Skagway and there's a brothel museum upstairs. This is a view of Skagway. To learn more about the history of Skagway and the Klondike Gold Rush, be sure to visit the Klondike Gold Rush National Historical Park. The National Park Service Visitor Center at 2nd Avenue and Broadway has exhibits, a video about the Gold Rush, and offers ranger-led walking tours of Skagway. A favorite in Skagway is the Days of 98 show. The Days of 98 show has been performed since 1923 and tells the tale of Skagway and of Soapy Smith, Alaska's most notorious outlaw. The show features can can dancers, ragtime music, riotous humor, and the great con man himself, Soapy Smith. Chapter 26 Wrangell Wrangell is a small town of about 2,300 people, north of Ketchikan on the Inside Passage. Wrangell, Alaska was named for Baron Ferdinand Petrovich von Wrangell, a Russian naval officer, Arctic explorer, and government administrator. Wrangell commanded a Russian naval expedition, 1820 to 1824 that explored the Arctic and led another Russian expedition around the world, 1825 to 1827. Baron Ferdinand Petrovich von Wrangel was the first governor of the Russian colonies in Alaska, 1829 to 1835. Director of the Russian American Company, 1840 to 1849. And Minister of the Navy, 1855 to 1857. Baron von Wrangel was highly critical of the sale of Alaska to the United States in 1867 in addition to the town of Wrangel. Several islands are named for him. Wrangel is the third oldest community in Alaska and the second oldest community in southeast Alaska.
It is the only city in Alaska to be ruled by four nations and under three flags, Tlingit Russia England and the United States. Wrangell started in 1834 as the Russian redoubt St. Dionysus. The Russians established the fort in order to preserve their interests in the region. Both the Spanish and English had also been carefully scouting the extent of Russian settlement with a night towards occupation themselves. On May 30, 1840, the Hudson Bay Company ship, Bava, reached Fort Dionysius. The Russian flag was lowered and the British flag raised. The force was renamed Fort Fort Stikin and the Russians transferred their men to Sitka. The Hudson's Bay Company leased the forelands of the Stikin area for more than 20 years and continued to operate the fort until the purchase of Alaska from Russia in 1867 by the United States. These are views of the area around Wrangell. Here are some points of interest in Wrangell. Chief Shakes Island in the middle of Wrangell Harbor is accessed by a walkway. Chief Shakes Island is the site of Chief Shakes Tribal House and Historic Monument. Chief Shakes Island is open at all times for walking and experiencing the peaceful setting, and to view the intricately carved totems surrounding the hand hewn community house. Chapter 27 Sitka Sitka under the name of New Archangel was the capital of Russian America and headquarters of the Russian American Fur Company. Sitka is on the Pacific coast about midway along the Inside Passage. Sitka is on the Baranoff Island of the Alexander Archipelago. Here is Sitka on the Pacific coast side of Baranoff Island. Here again is Sitka on the Pacific coast side of Baranoff Island. Mount Edgecumbe is a short distance west of Sitka. This is the Mount Edgecumbe near Sitka. This is the harbor at Sitka, with Mount Edgecumbe nearby. Here are some points of interest in Sitka. These are some points of interest in downtown Sitka. This is the harbor at Sitka. The Russian Alexander Baranov founded New Archangel in 1799. Here is the location of the Baranov Castle Hill State Historic Site. The Baranoff Castle Hill State Historic Site is a national historic landmark and the site of both native Tlingit and Russian forts. Castle Hill was ceded by the Tlingit people to the Russian government after the Battle of 1804. On Castle Hill in 1867, the Russian flag was lowered and the American flag was raised, marking the transfer of Alaska to the United States. No structures remain on Castle Hill, and it is now an Alaska State Park. Seiko is largest port on the North Pacific coast and home to fur trade. The fishing industry is now important to Sitka. This area has one of the largest concentrations of bald eagles. Sitka is home to the Bald Eagle Raptor Center for Rescue and Rehabilitation. This is the location of the Bald Eagle Raptor Center for Rescue and Rehabilitation. The Sitka National Historical Park commemorates the Battle of 1804. This battle was the Russian retaliation against native Tlingits, who had tried to oust the Russians two years earlier. This is the location of the Sitka National Historical Park. Built in 1842. The Russian Bishop's House is the oldest house in Sitka. This shows the location of the Russian Bishop's House. The Russian Bishop's House has been restored and is now open to the public. 
It served as both school and residence of the Bishop of the Russian Orthodox Church. St. Michael's Russian Orthodox Church was built between 1844 and 1848. St. Michael's Cathedral is also known as Cathedral of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael's Cathedral has been a national historic landmark since 1962. Its significance is as primary evidence of Russian influence in North America. It is a Russian Orthodox Church. This is the location of St. Michael's Russian Orthodox Church. The New Archangel dancers perform Russian folk dances in Sitka. Their mission is to promote and encourage interest in Alaska's Russian history and culture through ethnic folk dance and song. The summer performances are half long and include a variety of lively and authentic folk dances from Russia and the surrounding regions. Regular summer shows are timed with the arrival of cruise ships and are performed at the Harrigan Centennial Hall in downtown Sitka. The Sheldon Jackson Museum is located on the campus of Sheldon Jackson College in Sitka. The museum was founded in 1887 as the first museum in the state of Alaska. The Sheldon Jackson Museum collection soon outgrew its temporary quarters and a new specially dedicated concrete structure was constructed between 1895 and 1897 and, upon completion, became the first concrete structure ever to be built in Alaska. The museum continues to be located in this structure. Many of the artifacts housed in the museum, over 5,000, were originally collected by Reverend Sheldon Jackson in his travels through rural Alaska. The museum's collection almost exclusively focuses on Alaskan native groups such as the Aleuts, Athabascans, Eskimos, and Tlingit Simshian. This shows the location of the Sheldon Jackson Museum. Chapter 28 Anchorage Anchorage is by far the largest city in Alaska. It is situated in the south-central part of the state. At the head of Cook Inlet. Anchorage is close to Valdez in the Prince William Sound, which was the site of the Exxon Valdez oil spill. Here is Anchorage, Prince William Sound, and the port of Valdez the terminus of the Alaska Pipeline. To the north of Anchorage is Denali National Park and Mount McKinley. Anchorage has grown rapidly, especially in the 1970s from 48,000 in 1970 to 300,000 today. More than half of the state's inhabitants live in the greater Anchorage area. It is Alaska's chief center for air transportation and serves as headquarters for the Northern Air Defense. Anchorage is on the shores of the Cook Inlet. This area was first discovered by Captain James Cook during his third voyage of discovery in 1778. Resolution Park honors Cook's discovery of the Cook Inlet. In 1915, President Woodrow Wilson authorized construction of the Alaska Railroad. The Alaska Railroad headquarters were to be located at nearby Ship Creek Landing. The Alaska Railroad runs from Seward on the Gulf of Alaska through Anchorage and then to Denali National Park, and ends at Fairbanks. The Alaska is very popular with tourists, many of whom fly into Anchorage and then take the train to Denali National Park. An important marine terminal for the Trans-Alaska Pipeline is near Anchorage. These are views of Anchorage. The Anchorage Museum has exhibits on the history and art of Alaska. It welcomes over 180,000 visitors a year and serves as a cultural center for the Anchorage region.
The museum is among Alaska's top 10 visitor attractions. There is much scenic beauty in the region near Anchorage, including the fjords of Prince William Sound near Anchorage. Portage Glacier is one of the 26 different glaciers that empty into Prince William Sound. In 1964 an earthquake that struck the southern part of the state caused widespread destruction and demolished a portion of Anchorage's downtown section. The 1964 Alaska Earthquake Also known as the Great Alaskan Earthquake, the Portage Earthquake and the Good Friday Earthquake was a megathrust earthquake that began at 5.36 p.m. Alaska time on Good Friday, March 27, 1964. Ground fissures, collapsing buildings, and tsunamis resulting from the temblor caused about 131 deaths. Lasting nearly four minutes, it was the most powerful recorded earthquake in U.S. and North American history, and the second most powerful ever measured by seismograph. The 1964 Alaska earthquake had a magnitude of 9.2, at the time making it the second largest earthquake in the recorded history of the world. Chapter 29 Fairbanks, the Gateway to Denali Fairbanks is Alaska's second-largest city. It is situated on the broad interior plateau on the Chena River. Fairbanks started as a supply post in the Chena River for gold prospectors. Then Fairbanks became the northern terminus for the Alaska Railroad that came up from Anchorage. Oil in the Alaska pipeline became the next big industry. El Dorado Gold Mine is a tourist attraction near Fairbanks. The mine operates from May to September, offering tours of the mines and train tours several times per day. There are stern wheeler journeys available on the Chena and Denana rivers. The major importance of Fairbanks is as the transportation hub for the remote areas on the plateau and in the Arctic region including the oil drill sites on the North Slope and the interior villages. Both the Chena and the Denana River run through Fairbanks. Fairbanks is the terminus of the Alaska Railroad, the Alaska Highway, the George Parks Highway, and the Stees Highway, and it is also the beginning of the Dalton Highway to Perwaho Bay. The Athabascan Indians live in the region around Fairbanks. Fairbanks is gateway to Denali National Park on the Alaska Railroad. This is a view of the Alaska Railroad. This is a plaza in Fairbanks. Chapter 30 Denali National Park the Denali National Park was founded in 1980. Mount McKinley is the highest point in North America at 20,322 feet, or 6,194 meters. Two tectonic plates collided to push the Earth upward, forming the mountains of Denali National Park. This is a view of Denali National Park. The Sakarabu in Denali National Park. This is in Denali National Park. This is in Denali National Park. Chapter 31 Valdez. Valdez is in southeastern Alaska near Anchorage. It is the southern terminus of the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. Valdez is on Prince William Sound. This is Valdez on Prince William Sound. Valdez is called the Little Switzerland of Alaska. 
This is a view of Valdez. The Exxon Valdez oil spill. Valdez was a jumping off point for the Klondike in 1898. Valdez Bay is the northernmost ice free port in North America. The Alaska Marine Terminal at Valdez is the southern terminus of the Trans Alaska Pipeline. Completed in 1977. The pipeline is 800 miles, 1300 kilometers, long from the north slope to Valdez. It crosses three mountain ranges and over 800 rivers and stream. Over 13 billion barrels of crude oil have been pumped through the pipeline. Chapter 32 Recommended Videos, Alaska Recommended Video, Alaska 50 States, U.S. Geography 2 minutes 30 seconds Recommended Video, National Geographic Discovering Alaska. 6 minutes. 22 seconds. Recommended video, 7 facts about Alaska. 5 minutes. 56 seconds. Recommended video, Alaska and Hawaii compared. 18 minutes. 59 seconds. Recommended video, how the geography of the U.S. is weirder than you think. 6 minutes. 17 seconds. Recommended video, Top 10 Tourist Attractions in Alaska. 1 minute. 30 seconds. Recommended video, 15 Top Tourist Attractions in Alaska. 2 minutes. 8 seconds. Recommended video, Alaska's Inside Passage Vacation Travel Video Guide. 25 minutes. 42 seconds. Recommended video, Things to do in Alaska's Inside Passage. 3 minutes. 9 seconds. Recommended video, Viking, Alaska and the Inside Passage. 2 minutes. 48 seconds. Table of Contents, Alaska. Thanks for watching.